Good morning, everyone. Everyone hear me? Yes. Good. Well, first of all, thank you so much for being with us this morning. My name is Nancy Nance, and I am the um, lead horticulture volunteer, I think is my official title, which basically means I work with all of our port volunteers, and I get to dig in the dirt, which is a pretty big privilege. Let me tell you, it's plenty of fun. Um, of course, we, you all know we're entering or just around the corner from our wonderful Bass <laughs> Blooms Festival. Um, and of course, what's the, always the star of the festival are wonderful bulbs. I don't know about you guys, but I get questions all the time when I walk through the garden. Uh, our guests have lots of questions, and some I know the answers to, many I don't. Well, we have the solution for you today. We have the expert with us this morning. So, um, Deborah Eckel is with us from Abbott Epco, and Abbott Epco is the company that supplies these wonderful bulbs. And uh, Deborah just shared with me this morning that she's been with this company for 20 years, which means she definitely knows everything there is to know. Of course, she did tell me, shared with me, that she went to work when she was 12 years old. So, <laughs> <laughs> so please give Deborah a warm welcome. really loud anyway, so you can probably uh, hear me even without the mic, but I'll stay um, around the mic. It's great to be here. I love uh, sharing information and, and background about this material and things that I've learned as I've worked with uh, the original man that started this company. Uh, both came to America from Holland, uh, one as a uh, a teenager really and the other man is a young married person so definitely foundationally uh, Dutch people. Harry Hollander uh, was the original owner of Abbott Co and uh, just passed away this past year and Bill Manhattan um, that I worked under directly for several years retired last year so we moved into the next generation, but Abbott Ipco is a wholesale horticulture company based here in Dallas. We also have um, an office in Holland and an agent over there that's our uh, buyer and, and liaison with Holland, and it's always exciting to me that at the touch of a button on my computer, I can talk to Ott in Holland, or I can email New Zealand, or I can from you know like it's just we can stay so connected as far as um, accessing supplies and things so we deal with the bulbs in the fall um, also in the fall perennials roots uh, all those kinds of things um, that we import primarily from Holland some stuff from growing locations in the west coast and in the spring we have uh, our, our major line is we have a farm in Florida, Central Florida, that grows caladium bulbs. Um, in addition to that, cannas, and perennials, all, all these other things. But th those are the two biggies as far as our switch of seasons, the fall bulbs and caladium bulbs um, in the spring. So today we're going to focus on, on fall and uh, take a look at, at that and just talk about a couple things. Uh, as we're talking, if you have like a burning question, just, just raise your hand and we'll, you know, I'll, if, if I know, I'll answer, and if I don't know, I'll make something up, so. <laughs> when, uh, in the fall, you know, when anybody thinks about, you know, these kinds of plants, I mean, there, you know, there's a country that comes to mind when <laughs> you think about all of these uh, lovely plants. And also, let me give a shout out, Jimmy, a lot of these, uh, images from Holland or from a trip that Jimmy Turner, who many of you remember Jimmy, that was, yeah, the uh, director here years ago, he went on a trip with Harry Hollander and a couple of the people from our company and took thousands of pictures in Holland. So these are actual images uh, that he shared with me, the things that are they're actually from Holland. Um, so yeah, this is the image that comes to mind, the land that uh, all of this comes from. Uh, awesome 
inspiration from uh, the gardens there. One of the interesting things about the Kuchenhof Gardens is it's only open during the season that all of these bulbs are blooming. Unlike the Arboretum that's open year round, the Kuchenhof is only open for the bulb season uh, and then it's closed down the rest of the year. Uh, but the inspiration at that garden as far as what uh, things look like, the pattern of planting, the new varieties that are used is simply uh, amazing. That river of Mascari is, is unreal. Uh, I will say that um, the plant material that grows in that part of the world is is bigger than what we get in other parts of the world. The, the tulips are, are bigger and um, the phrase that they use is the tulips are so big and strong that you can lean your bike up against, against it. Um, not only tulips, but you know, daffodils, uh, more windmills, not the, you know, a more modern version of windmills, but daffodils everywhere. So, so Holland, 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 people think of that, but, uh, oh, by the way, uh, guess what? Daffodils uh, grow here in our part of the world. This is a field of daffodils down in Austin in Central Texas. Uh, on some private land down there. Gorgeous. Uh, daffodils uh, don't just belong to the Dutch as far as the beauty there. Oh, and uh, daffodils grow in Waco. We've uh -huh. uh, got bulbs going in. Uh, how many of y'all have been to Magnolia, the silos in Waco? Yeah, with, with the Gaineses. So, so they just started uh, last year with some bulbs down there. Um, a friend of mine sent me this screenshot from Instagram. I, I do some social media, but not like constantly. And so she sent me this screenshot of uh, our tulips that Joanna posted and like within 30 minutes, there were like 93,000 likes on that image. So people love Tulips, and so uh, the Arboretum and the Dallas Blooms is like the tip top of that experience, though, so by by far. I mean, there's absolutely no comparison with, with what goes on here. Um, you guys see this version of what goes on and the intense schedule that goes on as far as getting the numbers of pulps in the ground. Um, over years of um, recording of temperatures and so forth. I mean, it just feels like a matter of course now, but you know, right before Thanksgiving or around Thanksgiving and into the coming weeks, it, you know, but that's not a guess. That's something that was developed and, and watched uh, through the years so that you know that that's when the bulbs go in the ground here. Um, in, uh, in this part of, of the world for ultimate success. So uh, the results are spectacular. Our uh, buyer from Holland comes, uh, I'm seeing, <laughs> and shaking like, I'm sorry y'all. I'll give you a second. There's like a, there are like spotlights there that are like spotlighting on the screen. No, I'll give you a second. Yeah, it's no problem. But yeah, there's a bank of spotlights here that are spotlighting. The rest of the lights are are okay. I'll just tell you a few years ago when when Ott came in to uh, came into town to uh, have our meetings with him and what have you. I mean, it had been a long time since he'd been to the arboretum, and so we scheduled a meeting over here and to come and tour the gardens. And I don't know what he thought that y'all were doing with 
you know, the thousands of bulbs that you bought every year, but he was blown away when he came and uh, toured the gardens during the peak of Dallas Blooms. I mean, he, in all honesty, I mean, uh, Dutch people aren't, um, uh, what I want to say, they're, they're, they're not going to give you a compliment that's unwarranted, I guess I'll put it that way, but, but I totally, he's like, this, you know, the, this is not as many acres as Kuchenhof, but this is a Kuchenhof experience here with the Dallas Blooms and what's done, and so I... Uh, Walk away, walk as, away. Uh, <laughs> as the ultimate compliment from a Dutchman, Ott actually lives like down the street from Kukanoff. He walks there almost daily during the season to check on varieties. So he, when he said that, I mean, he meant it. Um, the displays that are created uh, at the Arboretum, I, you know, it's just, it's, unparalleled as far as the experience that you get without making a 12-hour plane trip overseas to um, a European garden. So now we're going to talk about a little bit of background. You know, you guys see the bulbs going in the ground, but there's a lot of other stuff that goes on under the radar in order to make that happen. Most of the bulk production in the Netherlands is on, in the coastal, the west part of the country in the Zuiderzee area. Um, it's the land is still, none of the land is cheap, but it's still cheaper land that they can still afford to um, farm and do mass production. So you see these gorgeous fields uh, of hyacinth in blocks of color. Um, and when you see that, there's a, a reason that everything is grown like this in big blocks. Certain growers, certain farmers, producers specialize in a variety or a family of varieties and they may be the only ones that grow those particular crops or varieties so when we're working with Jenny and Mark on their plans for the garden and what have you um, if a farmer or a producer has an issue one year because of weather because of uh, fill in the blank with all of those farming kind of things, it affects that there's nobody else to go to to get it. Does that make sense? Because that's the person that produces uh, this. The other good thing that that does though is it also produces quality control. You know who's responsible. You know who the greatest um, uh, or the most successful person is uh, producing these different lines of products. So when the fields are in full bloom, like they're just coming on and in full bloom is when the harvest starts, which is almost like you feel like, uh, oh, you know, it's like heartbreaking, but, but that reminds me of like our, the cotton gins, you know, it's, it's you recognize that. So the fields start basically getting sheared. All of the flowering is removed because you don't want any more of bulb energy being used up by the flower. You want all the energy to stay in the bulb. So the first thing, it's all sheared off. So that's a field that all the flowers are gone and then they'll come back through and do the, the bulb digging and drying and whatever. So imagine looking at that amount of acreage, like what in the world uh, do they do with all those flowers? Some of it gets um, used for animal feed 
it's actually edible and so they use it to feed cows and pigs and so forth. Um, but uh, since this is the Dutch we're talking about, uh, they use all of those petals and create a festival and decoration. So I, I know, look, those bridges go on and on. Those are all like uh, daffodil petals that are covering um, the bridges of all sizes during a certain season when they um, have um, a festival. Mosaics made out of hyacinth petals. I, I, I know, my mind is like blown. So this is a close of, of people have those um, yeah, that's Rembrandt, yeah, Rembrandt, um, in their yards. I mean, you know, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's like the competition that we do in Texas where people, like, decorate with Christmas lights, you know, and, like, every neighbor's doing the, you know, the bigger and bigger show. Like, people have all different kinds of pictures and shows and stuff that they do and display in their yards. So, yeah, so a lot of those petals and flowers do get put to use. They're not, they don't just... Uh, don't just go in the garbage heap, so to speak. Um, back to the bowls. I mean, because that's the part. Uh, all this is is the uh, extra use. But the bowls that are processed uh, are cleaned. Um, they're packed away in uh, storage areas, cool areas, processed and um, cataloged for sale. Uh, some of the very fragile bulbs, like fritillaria bulbs, which we don't really use here, but it's very popular in, in other climates, are still handled by hand even because they fracture and break very easily. Um, in the bulb market, there's, um, this is the auction the, uh, where cut flowers go through there like like daily, but the bulbs also go through this uh, market if there are things that um, aren't pre-sold. This is like, I think the only auction that's got a full-blown airstrip, like airport on top of this auction. So as these things are sold, they go out, they go in an airport, and so these cuts, these flowers and bulbs, when lots of bulbs are sold, can be in a country by the next day. I mean, things move incredibly fast, and that clock up there, I mean, it's like uh, the people on the uh, phone banks are speaking for that. I mean, it's like so fast you can't even keep up with it. It's like the, the stock market, you know, process. Um, so, which countries do you think consume the most bulbs globally? Like who, where, what, what's the market for these? Like who uses the most? Any ideas? We're, we're there, but... Yeah. The, Indonesia? Germany. Germany uses, I mean, the most. A lot of them are produced for, uh, they are cut flower growers, again. It, it's not all necessarily just going in uh, the landscape or the ground. Germany, Russia, and uh, the United States are... Um, Bulbs are uh, packed in all kinds of shipping, but ventilated containers. Um, the shipping containers, you, you see these around town. They're, they're different from uh, like a regular semi because <coughs> the back part of it like comes off, you know, into um, so that it's shippable. So the other question is, which country needs their bulbs sooner than everybody else? Who's the country that's in the biggest hurry to get stuff out of the shelf? That would be us, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, how early do you see bulbs out on the shelf in a store sometimes? And you guys know, it's like, what in the world? Like, there's bulbs out, 
you know, the end of August, the first of September, which is like completely not even remotely close to the time that they should be going into the ground. But yes, we're we're the country that's in in a hurry, and so uh, that stuff is actively moving starting in August. There are ships and shipments um, going out. The Dutch also have been at the top of the game as far as all the printed material and um, the files of pictures and images and all that. That whole thing is changing rapidly though as we've all begun to shift to digital images. So it's, it's definitely changing, although they still produce, you know, the POP and the pictures and the, the tags that are on things. But again, the digital world is, is rapidly uh, making inroads there. Um, this is uh, another very interesting, uh, it, I won't even say practice, uh, it's, it's a, a legal process that they do. This is a trial board, a garden of sorts, but it's actually a trial garden, not to look for new varieties, but it's lot samples of things that are shipped. So a huge producer, like those huge bills of uh, tulips that we saw, when he ships a lot of those bulbs to a buyer, there's a sample out of that shipment that was cleared and examined and so forth that's planted, numbered, named, you know, identifiable. So, down the line, if somebody that receives that shipment starts seeing problems or uh, questions, they can reference this lot and see if they're seeing any, um, any of those same problems exhibiting in that particular lot. So, um, and we've, we've had that, uh, not often, but, but truly if there's something widespread, it's traceable back to lots, specific growers, specific shipments that um, can be looked at. So um, it's it's a live uh, reference. It's a live Google of, of information that's there. Uh, those containers uh, that come off the back of the semis are loaded up, and they are stacked and loaded. Huge shipments of them. Most of our material and your material that comes in comes through the port of Houston. Um, so, another element is, uh, oh by the way, what's going on in the month of September and, and October in our world. It's hurricane season, right? Yeah, yeah. So, we've had occasions where if the port gets backed up, which is what happened this year, um, ships have to stay out to sea wait for the port to reopen so look at how many containers are on that ship and imagine what kind of a backup that creates if there's 20 or 30 or 200 ships that are backed up waiting to get processed so it always sounds like a lame excuse when we tell customers well the hurricane caused some delays and people you know the eye roll of oh right but it's, it's, you know, it's a real thing when it, it, things are packed like this and they need to come in. This is uh, just a shot in our warehouse of, uh, we, we're um, not pretty where we are. People always, when I have customers, they want to come and look at things. There's not anything to look at where I am. It's, you know, it's the bulk bulbs, it's the roots, it's all of that. It's large coolers that are in different temperatures that control the uh, temperature for the bulbs or for the perennials or the lily bulbs are kept frozen until it's time to bring them out and plant them. Um, 
Most of the things that you get are in the bulk trays. They're also uh, what goes out to landscapers is processed in, in, in bags so that they're easier to handle. Um, here's Ott Bottenberg on one of his visits uh, taking a look. And Ott does come in the spring, walks the gardens, um, is available to answer questions, check on anything that uh, there may be an issue with, or just get feedback from the garden managers here at, uh, at the Arboretum. The other thing that we take a look at, make notes on, and watch are the trial gardens. Um, I uh, walked the property yesterday and right now you've got uh, trials planted in um, the American trials out in the front entrance and also in the other trial beds all down the centers. So you might think, well, you know, what, what's the, is that just um, something nice? I mean, it's something to, you know, uh, beautify the trial gardens or it's just something to, you know, kind of mess around with or whatever. But honestly, the trials actually, for the bulbs, actually began with Harry Hollander like over 30 years ago. There's an old picture somewhere, I did not have it, of the little bitty trial bed that started this whole thing. What comes out of this for the Arboretum is that any of you that get gardening books know that there, there are hundreds and hundreds of varieties of tulips and, and daffodils. Not all of them like it here. And sometimes it's hard to know why uh, they don't, but some of them just don't. And so we do the trials, the bulbs that are in your Dallas Bloom show are the result of decades of trialing bulbs and picking out these, okay, this is awesome, this works here, and it's expanded to where the designers and your garden planners know what to pick and what to pull from. So just a couple of examples that have come from uh, the trials recently. Um, and the other thing is we, we pull from that too as far as our landscape program that we offer to the uh, commercially in our lineup was Strong Gold because it was amazing for two, three years in the trial garden we added that to our regular program. Sky High Scarlet was another one. Um, so when you look at these, what, what do you notice when, when you look at these? Okay, yeah, that one's, yeah, it's, every, everything's, everything's there at the same time. Um, everything is consistent. You don't have one kind of here, another one, you know, it's all there. And you can see that from like across the field when I approach the trial beds and I don't know, do any of you guys walk the trial or notice the trial beds or yeah. take time? But I mean, you can see that looking across the field, the ones that are super consistent um, in their look and performance. Um, the Delight series was one that we were real excited about, but what we discovered is that even though all of those bulbs were Darwin hybrids, they came from the same series, they didn't all bloom at the same time, the different colors. So the Apricot Delight is the one that ended up being the standout out of that series, and uh, you'll see that in the garden again this year. But again, with the trial, we saw, uh, yeah, this doesn't work to combine even these from the same family. They all showed up at different times, the dark pink, the light pink, the um, apricot. So plants are living things. The Van Eyck series has been a huge, strong performer in our area. There's a, a dark pink, a light pink, 
orange, but they all show up at the same time. They're very even, they're very strong and long lasting. So that's been a successful pick from, um, from the trial gardens. Uh, who knows what the name of that one is. You see it, the Arboretum uses it extensively. It came from, from the trials for sure. Any papers on that? Yes, it is. That one has been like a rock star in the area. Uh, as far as the southern climate, if we have um, a warm winter, a cold winter, a uh, so-so, that, that one is like soldiers. I mean, it performs like crazy. Yes, sir? I didn't hear the name. Could you repeat it? It's world's oh, favorite. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, we had, I had customers like send me pictures from that one's Houston, that one's Houston, that one's Dallas. So it's, it's a stellar and that, that's what we're looking for in those trials and with um, the partnership that we work with. Uh, with the Arboretum and the team over here is to look for things that that work and are like standout <coughs> for home gardeners, for commercial gardening, uh, and for blooms for um, it to look amazing uh, during the season. The other variety from that same family that came out a couple of years later was World's Fire same awesomeness it's you know it's more red the yellow is thinner but again awesome performance consistency big flowers and it blooms the same time as the other members of um, that family so we've got a combination with uh, world peace world's fire um, world's favorite that uh, I'll take credit for this, but um, I just the name that seemed perfect was World Domination. <laughs> so, so we mix those ourselves and offer those for sale as, again, they're all there at the same time and it just makes an awesome uh, display for spring. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so can we go to any nurseries and buy these type of tulips? The, these varieties, uh, yes, are, yeah, should be uh, available. We have tulips in uh, Callaways and in North Haven Gardens in, in the area. Sure do. And I want to ask you something else. So what's the difference between a John Crow and a daffodil? And what's the deal with all that? If you don't use John Crow, I've heard you say John Crow. you call it? Yes, basically that's just like the common term. If botanically speaking, there are differences as far as um, you know the narcissus daffodil thing. John quills are uh, smaller, more perennializing. They're you know some of the the littler, more miniature type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vintage. I think that's the you know the term that people or heirloom varieties. Are, are true John Quills, but there are still some other varieties that we carry that are from that family. Yeah, but they're definitely the the smaller ones. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So I I hope from from looking at what's the results of what's been produced from the efforts through years of the trial gardens and um, observation and recording temperatures and everything that goes into making blooms not just happen but be jaw-droppingly awesome through the spring it, it doesn't just happen like it's been a long process of development and identifying what's successful and capitalizing on that so that the Arboretum has uh, an amazing show. So, you know, 
full circle, you're back around um, when they harvest those bulbs, they have little bulblets on the side. The little bulblets are what goes back in the ground to create a whole new field of the varieties that uh, there's demand for uh, and varieties that are strong and successful. And over the years, there are varieties that whip out, you know, because again, you're taking that mother bulb, whether it's the daffodil or the tulip, taking a part of it and replanting. And so some of the old names you do see disappearing, like Dutch Master, for instance, you know, that's kind of one that's, um, that's waning. But as these exciting varieties are visible, they can be identified, be tapped into, uh, we're back to the prep here, which is, I, people really, I don't think they even believe it when I tell them how many bulbs get planted here in the amount of time that um, the team spends getting these in. It's, it's impressive, let me just say. It's very impressive and well done. Um, what is the number? Um, it's like uh, right at a half a million bulbs is what goes in and they do it depending on if it starts pouring down rain or whatever but honestly they get that done in less than four weeks and sometimes it's close certain years it's been closer to three which is like jaw dropping especially when other people balk at the idea of buying a bag of a hundred bowls <laughs> like they're, they're overwhelmed like a hundred I don't know if I can use a hundred <laughs> and so uh, I, yeah you can use a hundred uh, uh, so I think the other thing with Dallas Blooms that is so awesome is the inspiration of how to use these and enjoy them you plant them in the banks, you plant them in the bouquet style planting, which is one of my favorites, which is dig a hole, pour some bowls in it, and cover it up so that, you know, you get the bunches of, of tulips for display um, and enjoy that. But this is going to be a good year. We're having a good, uh, cool season. The ground is cool, the bulbs are right on track as far as what's happening out there. So it's gonna be a good year. Blooms is gonna be is gonna be great. Yes, sir. Is the last rain or drought conditions affecting things now? Like what's already planted right now? Um, one of the things that, that <coughs> we uh, advise our, our customers is to keep an eye on that. Bulbs don't have to be like moist all the time, but if we go, you know, a couple of weeks without a drop of anything to just make sure you occasionally, you know, water your beds at home or on properties, don't let it go for weeks or a couple of months without a drop of, of moisture, um, that, that does take a toll. But, but they don't have to be watered, watered, watered like a, 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 a little blooming plant through the season. Yeah, they're, they're pretty tolerant. Yes, sir? How do you propagate, develop new varieties of tulips? What's the process for that? Um, well, it's like um, other plants as far as hybridizing that mm -hmm. they, you know, do the pollen thing and, you know, the crossover and all of that. So with that, the other thing that you see with some varieties is they revert, like they don't stay like you want it, the qualities that you want it. So again, um, there's a whole uh, uh, area of farmers, well that aren't farmers, but they're hybridizers. They're, they're guys that just work on that part of the process and once they've got it settled, things are picked and it, it goes on into production then. Yes, ma'am. Uh, those gigantic fields of tulips, uh, is, is that to grow the bulbs or is it to see what they look like when they're blooming? Or I would think that um, blooming, the, with the bulbs blooming, it would get rid of the bulbs. Like they, they wouldn't be as good the next time. Or how does that work? 
part of that recharges the bulb, so you want it, yeah, you want it to to bloom. And again, it's just like at as it's peaking is when it gets cut off. I mean, as soon as it, you know, you want it to look good for another two, three weeks, it's it's cut off so that the energy goes back in the bulb. But mm -hmm. th that's actual fields of production. Okay, so the bulb is better after it blooms that little bit. Well, yeah, it's got to go, I mean, it's got to go through its cycle because um, it's like, um, it's like if you had it in your yard and you let it bloom and you cut it, you know, it's got that, it's got to recycle and trigger that production in the heart of the bulb so that it's going to bloom again. You've got to let it do its whole cycle okay. in order to like sell the bulb, you know, I mean, yeah. Yes, sir. Do you ever source from Northwest Washington? Uh-huh. We do. Some of, uh, some of our, uh, the daffodils come from from that part of the part of the come from uh, yeah, Washington Bowl Company. So yeah, so they have conditions up there that uh, they they go through the same process. Their timing is a little bit earlier, so that we have some bowls that can actually start coming in sooner. But but daffodils are primarily what we what we pull in from up there. They claim to be the largest producer of tulips and daffodils outside of Kuchenhof. Which, yeah, I, true. Near, near Mount Vernon. Yeah, I, that's true because there's really not anybody else that does it. <laughs> uh, for, for a host of reasons, but, but yeah, no, I, would, I would agree with that. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I want to know, I miss, where did you say you're from? Uh, da Dallas. Our company's based here in Dallas. We have a Dallas office, which is a warehousey, you know, bulk cooling uh, office and bulk cooling storage. And then we have an office in the Netherlands as well. Yes, ma'am. My question is: For the last couple of years, we have had an Are going to have an awesome spring because we cooled off more normally whatever that means in Texas but we actually got cool weather in December and it's has stayed cool I mean we've had cool nights it's been in the 30s the 30s the 20s the third you know last year we hardly had enough cold weather to cool the ground temperature off and so that that really is the key um, and again, walking the grounds, everything looks appropriate right now. You know, the daffodils are tipping out, the tulips are tipping, the ground temperature staying cool. You guys also water the beds so that that keeps the ground temperature cool. So I think you're going to see a much uh, more successful and uh, long-lasting result this season. Absolutely, it's going to be a better year this year. Yes, sir. Do any of the bulbs here at the Arboretum come back year after year, and do they sometimes come back where you don't want them? Maybe last year you planted something pink, and this year you have something different. Pink <laughs> ones show they, up. They uh, they clear out the bulbs pretty well. I will say that I think this year um, some of the bulbs that we've supplied are being placed in areas that uh, are going to be allowed to naturalize and come back. The daffodils definitely uh, have more of a chance of coming back here in this part of the world. And a lot of that has to do less with the temperature in the winter than getting baked in the ground during the summer is, is the kicker. I mean, that really is what, what happens to these. I will say though, but you can't depend on that from Dallas Blooms, we had like donated a bunch of bulbs one year and so the team here just planted a trench uh, back by that frontier garden by the big gate planted them and so you know didn't go back and dig them back out like the other display bins those things bloomed like crazy the next year they looked but you can't depend on that because like this lady said uh, 
you know, our, the weather is just so unpredictable to have this level of display, you, you know, you, you have to replant those, those tulips for sure. Yes, ma'am. Is there any damage when they're, they're shipped over and they're in those big, uh, I don't know what they call them, the boxes, mm -hmm. the boxes. I noticed you have to cool the, the bulbs. Is there any way to cool them on the way over? Uh-huh, yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are cooled, and um, there's actually, there's a lot of regulations with this. There's actually a uh, thermometer with a timer and all of this that records all of that in each container. Once again, it's the whole idea like whose responsibility in getting things from point A to point C that the bulbs do what they're supposed to do and so so that's a requirement that 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 gauge is in there and it's uh turned in and, and and i'm sorry i don't know all the usda the bulb federation but but i mean that's a requirement and it is recorded so that there's no mistaking that the bulb was not treated with the right controls all along the way because you're right they're on the water for about two to three weeks it, yeah it's not a it's not a short you know like flight we fly some things we air freight some things just because of special orders but obviously that's not practical for the the amount of material that uh that comes over yeah. well Oops. Well, we'll see. Well, you know, almost not quite like that. I will say, I know my daughter would be like rolling her eyes, but it's like it's such a temptation to like, oh, how did that frame get in there? I will say that two years ago I did trek to the base camp of Mount Everest, so oh I have a picture of that to prove it. So. It didn't look like that, though. <laughs> but it was still epic and, and intense. So uh, maybe another time uh, with that. But it's been my pleasure to be here today. If you have any questions that, you know, things people ask you, but honestly, more than anything, just to reassure you that this is not just a off-the-cuff process that happens here with the blooms event that the arboretum pulls off and produces every year. There is year-round attention and um, expertise and effort that goes into the success of what everybody uh, presents to the public. So it's going to be a good year so good luck with blooms you might see me over here i'm usually over here uh, every week watching checking making sure things are are looking good making notes on some rock stars that uh, that uh, jenny and uh, mark pick out that we don't necessarily include in our regular program and uh, make it a, a new hit so thank you very much for your time today Coffee shop? Yeah. Do you know kind of where? It no is? idea.
Okay.